So I got a message, and I'm reading it here. Hi, Dominican Rendezvous. I have a question about transportation, moving about, and location. I'm thinking of buying a place in Santo Domingo Este. I'm sure you're familiar with there. I am concerned about the traffic. As you know, it can be horrendous. What advice do you have in this regard? Always watching your content. You're the best. Keo. Well, thank you so much, Keo. Thank you very much for the, the compliment. I hope you do continue to watch. Today, I will try to address traffic and transportation and how it affects uh, the place that you would be uh, thinking of, of moving to. So stay tuned and I will address this right after this. Welcome back to Dominican Rendezvous. Oftentimes, as people are looking for their new investment opportunity, their place of, of residence, perhaps that they're going to stay, perhaps a rental home uh, or a second home in some cases for some who come on vacation, but they, they tend to purchase uh, these places without really giving a lot of attention to the transportation and the traffic um, that could be or is around uh, the area where they are looking into purchasing. It is very important that location be considered. You've heard me say many, many times before, location, location, location. But in a part of that is that you must consider the transportation to and fro from where you're investing and the traffic patterns uh, that are uh, in and around the neighborhood and the area. Most people want to spend time at home and not stuck in heavy, stressful traffic. And this is why it's, again, so important to, to consider uh, where you're planning to invest. Commuting, local roads, transit op opportunities and options that are around your home, I believe are very, very important factors that everybody who is considering to buy uh, should consider very carefully. And so in this video, we're going to talk about the transportation effects um, in selecting a place. I think it's a very important topic. Thank you again uh, for the uh, email question uh, from Keo. Everybody knows, and I certainly know, that if you have a car or a vehicle, that driving is going to cost you a good sum of money. And to be honest, that expense is also a part of ownership of your home. Uh, again, if you're planning to relocate to the Dominican Republic and make the Dominican Republic your home, and you're thinking about uh, buying a car, uh, we've talked about this in other videos. If you do decide to buy a car or perhaps even bring your car from over over from the States, you need to budget for the costs of your commute as quote, I would say as part of a, uh, a part of your expenses uh, for home ownership. Now again, you want to know, for example, if you have a job somewhere, you're going to a particular location or, um, you know, frequently, maybe it's your job or maybe it's a school or driving kids to school or whatever the case may be, there is going to be cost involved. The price of driving is going to take, uh, you need to take a look at the uh, cost of the, the gas or the propane that you might be using, depending on what kind of car you have. Obviously, the maintenance of your car. Um, depreciation is often overlooked. Um, for the car and try to figure out um, on average how much is it going to cost you listen if you have a long commute or a commute that's long in terms of distance and in time it's going to uh, cost you a place that you choose that is close to good roads public transportation if you're willing to take the public transportation in the major cities of 
the Dominican Republic, such as Santiago and Santo Domingo, it may cost more initially, but as an investment, it will appreciate more and more over time and save you money. Listen, there is a lot of things that can be said about driving in the Dominican Republic. I am apt to make a, another video about the driving conditions, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, in the Dominican Republic at some point. Um, but you need to understand that driving in the Dominican Republic is no easy task, especially for the faint of heart, and especially for those who have not had a lot of experience uh, in, in it. Uh, driving the Dominican Republic in the open roads is nothing like driving in the United States on the open roads. Um, very few people like to get stuck in traffic and drive in traffic. Um, the faster that one can get from point A to point B is much preferred simply because you have more time to enjoy yourself at your destination uh, where you're going and not being stuck in in traffic so to speak but if there is a bus and there's a train available then the pros of that is you have time to uh, listen to music read uh, maybe even take a nap uh, on, on the bus or the train if you are inclined to do so and you don't have to worry about the dangers of the local Dominican Republic streets and driving conditions. Remember, don't only consider, you know, like um, you're only going to work. Think about maybe, like I said, you have to take kids to school. Uh, maybe you have to go shopping. Obviously, you will be going shopping at some point. Um, going to the mall, going to restaurants, just getting out altogether. These are things that you have to take into consideration. Now, for those of you who do know the big cities like Santiago and Santo Domingo, it's not so much uh, the case in Punta Cana, uh, but traffic is growing in the Punta Cana and Bavaro areas as well. But I'm talking specifically more about Santiago and Santo Domingo. As this particular uh, person asked in his uh, message to me, that the traffic can be horrific, uh, especially in Santo Domingo, especially in that area where you're talking about um, Santo Domingo Este, uh, even coming all the way in from the uh, Boca Chica uh, area into Santo Domingo, it can be quite, quite heavy at most of the time. Uh, even, even later in the evenings and into the night, you see a lot of traffic. So just keep that in mind that if you're going to be buying a place or considering to buy a place that is close uh, to the main thoroughfares or where there is a lot of traffic that you're going to have to put up with some of the the inconveniences of, of being uh, close to major roads or, or transit centers as such. Uh, these high traffic areas um, are close to bus and maybe metro stops but they can be uh, somewhat noisy and sometimes they're even more dangerous if you have you know um, small children and pets that may be uh, wanting to get out and walk around or run around um, you know around your house and around your area depending on where you are um, if you are going to look for um, being close to a public uh, transportation spot you want to make sure that you are close enough to walk uh, but also you know a lot of people are going to be walking those streets early in the mornings and later in the afternoons going back and forth uh, from those transit stops so you have to keep in mind also the type of non-motorized traffic I'm talking about foot traffic uh, that can also be um, very present if you're around those local transportation centers such as the metro or even bus stops um, so you want to try to get a sweet spot you want to try to find a place that's not too far from uh, the major roads but also not too far from local uh, transportation options if you can find it now one of the beautiful things is that modern technology these days has given us the opportunity uh, to to work from home and thus reducing the time of, of, of being in traffic and sick, sticking in rush hour and, and having to commute long distances. So if you can work from home, if you can um, uh, do whatever you can, you know, online through shopping online or whatever, that 
may also obviously uh, reduce your time uh, in traffic. But one of the things that you have to do is also do check what are some of the estimated times in traffic by using a map application uh, that you'll find. So if you're going to go to a restaurant, obviously uh, select a restaurant through your app, through, through a map app and see, you know, click on it and see what, what the distance is in terms of the directions and time that it'll take you to get there. It'll give you a little bit better of an idea of what traffic patterns are and, and time uh, is like. But again, if you're working from home, it really makes sense now. It's a good option, something to really consider um, uh, doing. You can move further out away from um, you know the discouraging traffic patterns and and foot traffic that may be discouraging to you as far as living in the place that you're looking uh, for to to living so give that some um, consideration but again I would also say this is just consider using public transportation anytime you can um, a lot of people are using it these days. Now, there are some inconveniences with it, and sometimes they'll be shut down for whatever reason, uh, delayed for whatever reason. Uh, those are things that you have to put up. But again, it is just something that you want to have to pay close attention to as you are planning to relocate, invest in the Dominican Republic. All I'm trying to say is, is take it care, take, take this issue seriously. Look carefully around your neighborhood see what the traffic patterns are like again both the local transportations on the road as well as the public transportation as well as the foot traffic etc these are things that are going to be very helpful for you as you continue to uh, consider investing in the Dominican Republic if you have any more questions, I hope this does help you. If you have any more questions, please feel free to get a hold of me. I am here for you. I look forward to talking to you as soon. From me to you, Dominican Rendezvous.